Chapter Twenty Two of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twenty Two: The Horsford Case. Towards the close of the year eighteen ninety seven, a Mrs. Holmes, a widow, was living with her three children at Stoneley near Kimbleton. She had a cousin named Walter Horsford, a well-to-do young farmer who occupied a farm at Spaldwick, about twelve miles away, and who frequently came to Stoneley to visit her. A romantic attachment eventually sprang up between them, which resulted in a too intimate acquaintance. After a while Horsford's affection began to wane, and in the end he married another lady shortly afterwards mrs holmes left stoneley and took up her residence at st neots about december of the same year she wrote a letter to horsford informing him of her condition a piece of news which appears to have greatly upset him as he was in fear the information might reach his wife on December 28 he called at a chemist shop in Thrapston, a neighbouring town, and asked for a shilling's worth of strychnine, some prussic acid, arsenic, and carbolic acid, which he stated he required for poisoning rats. The chemist, to whom he was a stranger, requested him to bring a witness, which he did, and the chemist's poison register was duly signed by Horsford and a man who introduced him. He took the poisons, which consisted of ninety grains of strychnine, one pound of arsenic, and some prussic acid and carbolic acid, away with him. About a week afterwards Mrs. Holmes received a letter from Horsford. It was taken in by her daughter, who recognized his handwriting, and the envelope is also supposed to have contained two packets of strychnine. On the evening of January 7, 1898, Mrs. Holmes retired to bed, apparently in her usual health, about half-past nine. The only other persons in the house were her daughter Annie, her son Percy, and her infant. The daughter noticed that her mother took a glass of water upstairs with her, which was an unusual circumstance. On going to her mother's bedroom shortly afterwards, she found her suffering great pain, and she saw the glass, now almost empty, standing on a chest of drawers. Percy Holmes ran out and called in the assistance of some neighbors, and then went for a doctor. When medical aid arrived, the unfortunate woman was in convulsions, and died shortly afterwards. The day after her death the police searched the house, but failed to find any trace of poison, and an inquest was held on January 8, which Horsford was summoned to attend. In his evidence before the coroner, he swore that he had neither written to nor seen the deceased woman. The medical evidence proved that death was caused by strychnine. The inquest was adjourned for a week, and in the meantime Mrs. Holmes was buried. From information received by the police, a further search was made in the house, with the result that two packets were discovered under the feather bed in Mrs. Holmes' bedroom. One packet of buff-colored paper was found to contain about thirty-three grains of strychnine in powder, on which was written the words, One dose, take as told, in Horsford's handwriting. On the second packet, the contents of which had been used, was written, Take in a little water, it is quite harmless. This was also in Horsford's handwriting. On January 10, Walter Horsford was arrested on the charge of perjury committed at the inquest, and it was resolved to have another examination made of the body of the deceased woman. On examination of further documents and letters discovered by the police, the charge of willful murder was added to corrupt perjury against Horsford, and he was committed for trial. The trial took place on June 2, 1898, in Huntingdon, before Mr. Justice Hawkins. Dr. Stevenson stated in his evidence he first made an analysis of a portion of the body of Mrs. Holmes on January 19, and extracted 1.31 grain of strychnine, but no other poison. Subsequently he examined the two packets, 
discovered under the bed, and found one containing thirty-three and three-quarter grains of powdered strychnine, and the other, which presented the appearance of having had the powder shaken out, a few minute crystals of strychnine. In each case it was the pure alkaloid. The body was exhumed nineteen days after death, and he then made an analysis of all the chief organs, and obtained therefrom a total quantity of 3.69 grains of strychnine. Death usually occurred about half an hour after the commencement of the symptoms. He judged there could not have been less than 10 grains of strychnine in the body at the time of death. The jury found Walter Horsford guilty, and he was sentenced to death. End of chapter 22